Hey friends, welcome to my channel, Happily Thriving Heidi. I'm Heidi Sambel and today I am showing you how to make a fringe ceiling lamp on a cheap, cheap budget. Now if you haven't heard, I have this beautiful, sweet friend. Her name is Yami from the Latina Next Door. She hosts a monthly Look For Less challenge and I decided this month to participate in it because I had this DIY I really wanted to make for our master bedroom. So Yami and her co-host this month, I will link them down below in the description box as well as the playlist. So go and check out all the other people who are participating in this challenge came across this fringe lamp that I knew would just look so beautiful here in our master bedroom which is the reason why I'm sitting here and so I ordered some supplies on Amazon I will link them all down below these are the supplies you're going to need for the project I'll link them down below in the description box but amongst those supplies you're gonna need two different large size circles I found a serving bowl and a large hamper circle and I'll link those dimensions down below as well Trace them on a foam cord board and with a cross pattern find the center point of your circle. Then thicken up the bands so that the chandelier's frame is strong and sturdy. Taking the electrical cord that you're going to be hanging your light from, trace a circle where the light would be inserted in so that you know the dimensions of that. Using an X-Acto knife, cut out your frame. Once you've got it all cut out, you're going to cut out a smaller circle than what you've traced because you don't want it to fall off of your light. Check to make sure that everything will fit through except for the part where you screw the light bulb in. Create an additional one, so you're going to cut out two and glue them together so that the top of the frame is very sturdy. I found a frame sitting around my home that was 8 inches wide and I wrapped my yarn around it so that I didn't have to cut these individually one by one. This speeds up the process. And then cut the bottom and the top to create all of your fringe pieces. Now I did this to 5 rolls of yarn and two rolls of twine because I wanted it to be very thick. Then I took my yarn at the top of them and I glued them onto the side. On the outside of each frame, I went around two times with the yarn and once on the middle, on the inside. And then I also, once I had all the yarn on, I made sure I flipped over my top part of the frame and glued on yarn where the cross pattern was so that there wasn't a weird fringe hole missing. And then once I had that, all the yarn on, I moved on to my twine and went around once on the outside with my twine. Then to make sure my light stayed in place because this is a swag light and it will move, I took a little bit extra of the foam cord. I created a box. This part doesn't look so pretty, but it's there for functionality. And then I made sure it fit in there nice and snug. Now here is the important part. Every light has some breathing holes. Make sure you cut the foam cord to allow the breathing holes so that the chandelier doesn't overheat and catch on fire because that would just be terrible. Then I laid the bottom chandelier frame to the top one and I created holes where I knew that I needed to let them hang down. I popped some yarn through the top hole, I glued it in place, and then I popped the holes at the bottom of the chandelier and I also glued those in place to allow them to suspend one from another. Make sure you use a lot of extra glue on this one to keep it in place so that it doesn't fall and it's very sturdy so that it can allow it to hang. Then once I had them suspended from each other, I hung it up so I can give it a little haircut. This was probably my favorite part of the whole process. Now this next part was tricky. The beads, you're going to have to figure out how you want them to look. I had to do a lot of math. I had to think about the dimensions of the circle and I, you can even see me here counting out the beads. Once I figured out where I wanted them to lay on my circle, I then took an eight inch piece of yarn and I threw that, I pulled that through the bead area where I counted and then tied it into place. And then just adjusting it before I hot glued them all into place to make sure I liked the way it looked. I pulled the tie knots at the top where I tied them onto the chandelier back so you couldn't see them. And then I put some glue, hold it down to make sure there's glue on the bottom side of it and the top side. And then I put a nice dollop of hot glue 
on the top of it to make sure that it didn't ever move and it would stay in place. Now this glue dries clear, so don't worry about that. And then here it is where it was all done. Now I will say that I also steamed it. I have a steamer. The steamer really finished the look. Don't forget to come back on Thursday because Thursday is when I'm revealing more steps that I'm doing in this room. Each month I take a room and I remodel it completely and I take the whole month to transform it. If you love participating in these kind of challenges, make sure you also check out a challenge I'm hosting with my friend Lindsay. This is our third time hosting it. It is the DIY floral challenge and this month we have a fun twist to it. I will also link that challenge down below so you can check that out and I will link the video for the invitation up here in the corner. Thanks for stopping by and being a friend. Until the next video, bye guys!